1974, the Air and Naval Forces of the Chinese Army carried out a massive landing on the Paracel Islands, which were under the control of Vietnamese forces. As a result, the Chinese forces engaged in combat with the Vietnamese Navy, inflicted significant losses on them, and caused the Vietnamese forces to retreat and leave the islands. Since that day, the islands have been under the control of the Chinese military. China has border disputes with about eight or nine countries. Looking at the terrestrial border issues, we find that China has disputes with Russia, which led to border clashes between the two sides in 1994. Rather than calling it a war, it's more accurate to describe it as significant skirmishes that nearly escalated into a nuclear conflict. However, the Russians and Chinese managed to resolve the issue through diplomatic means. China also has border disputes with India, where skirmishes occurred about a year or two ago resulting in the deaths of approximately 20 Indian soldiers. China has border disputes with Mongolia, the homeland of the Mongols, or Tatars, highlighting the issues on China's terrestrial borders. Now, let's move on to the maritime borders, which are more crucial and dangerous. Why are maritime disputes more critical? Simply because the issue is bigger than just Taiwan. According to the United Nations, Taiwan is considered Chinese territory, meaning it will eventually return to China, whether peacefully or through war. The more significant problem lies in the disputes between China and the countries bordering the South China Sea. Pay attention, because the South China Sea will be frequently mentioned in the news, so it's essential to understand the issue from the beginning. Let's take a look at this map showing the South China Sea and the surrounding countries. The most significant countries here are China, followed immediately by Taiwan. Of course, I'm not referring to Taiwan as a separate country, since the United Nations recognizes it as part of Chinese territory, but for the sake of current realities, let's include it as part of the South China Sea region. To the west, we have Vietnam, to the east, the Philippines, to the south, Brunei, or what's called Darussalam, and further west after Vietnam, Malaysia. I mention these countries because today, China is in disputes with these five countries. Now, the main question is, what are these disputes? And could they potentially lead to wars between China and the countries bordering the South China Sea? We'll find out shortly. So, let's remove this map and look at a new picture. This picture shows a series of white lines marking the economic waters of each country bordering the South China Sea. If we look at the northern part, we see this entire area represents the economic zone of China, including Taiwan. Since the white line is drawn considering Taiwan as part of China, not an independent country. Looking at the western part, we find the economic zone of Vietnam, noticeably larger than China's economic zone. To the east, the entire area represents the Philippines' economic zone. In the south, we have the economic zones of Jerusalem and Brunei, and in the far west, Malaysia's economic zone, with Indonesia's economic zone nearby. So, we are discussing disputes involving about six countries. Alright, let's talk about the area that's a bit darker, situated among all these regions. This area represents international waters. Note that the general definition of an economic zone includes a distance up to 200 nautical miles, which is about 230 miles, roughly translating to 350 or 400 kilometers. Now, what about the red line drawn here, consisting of nine dashes twice over? This is where China stepped in and said, forget it, forget it. Meaning, forget the lines the United Nations drew, which define the economic waters of each country. China does not recognize this. The new line that everyone should follow is this red line. So, what does the red line mean? It delineates China's claimed possessions in the South China Sea. China is telling all five countries that nothing within the red line belongs to them. Outside the red line, there's no problem. That area is left to them. Do you now understand how complex the problem is and that it's much bigger than the issue of Taiwan?
Of course, the problem is very significant. Huge amounts of oil and gas were discovered in the islands within the area China marked with the red line, and so began a series of events over the past 30 or 40 years. How about we look at these events in detail to understand what happened in the past and gain some perspective? Let me start with a group of islands known as the Paracel or Parcel Islands. This archipelago consists of about 130 islands. The problem is that these islands are located in the economic waters of Vietnam. So what's the story behind these islands and who currently owns them? Are there any problems or potential wars because of them? Let's see. These islands have been invaded by various groups over the past 200 years. The Germans made a landing there about 200 years ago, followed by the British and then the French, who stayed a bit longer. Around 1885, we're talking about roughly 100 or 150 years ago, there was a war between France and China over these islands, which lasted several months. It ended with an agreement where the French got a portion of the islands. Remember, we're talking about a massive number of islands, 130. The Chinese also obtained a group of islands. About 50 years later, Japan went to occupy China, as you may know. At that time, Chinese forces withdrew from these islands to fight Japan on the mainland. France took advantage of the situation and took over the other islands. But six years later, when Japan defeated China and subdued it, Japan fought France and expelled it from most of the islands. Japan took over a group of these islands and established military bases, including bases for ground and naval forces, even setting up a submarine base and placing a number of ships there. After Japan's defeat in 1945, at the end of World War II and its surrender to Western forces, a group of leaders, including the President of the United States, the Prime Minister of Britain, and the Commander of the Chinese Army, met in Cairo. This declaration is known as the Cairo Declaration. They agreed on several points, including that the Japanese forces in these islands should surrender and the islands should be returned to the Chinese forces. France strongly objected because it saw these islands as its colony. It had stolen them, but still claimed ownership and didn't want to be expelled. However, France's objection was not accepted by the American and British sides. France tried to forcibly expel the Chinese forces from these islands, but was unsuccessful. However, a few years later, the Chinese Civil War broke out between the Communists and the Western-aligned government, resulting in the defeat of the Western-aligned government, which then retreated to Taiwan. This marks the beginning of the issue with Taiwan, showing how interconnected these issues are. The government that fled to Taiwan ordered its forces on the Paracel Islands to leave, deeming their presence there as too risky and requiring them to return to protect Taiwan, which was deemed more important at the time. France then retook control of all these islands. About five or six years after the events I've mentioned, the French forces occupying Vietnam suffered a severe defeat. The French forces had a massive camp in Vietnamese territory, housing thousands of French soldiers. One morning, the soldiers woke up to find themselves surrounded by Vietnamese forces from all directions, who then launched an intensive attack using bombs, machine guns, artillery, rockets, and all kinds of weapons. The French government didn't know what to do since sending reinforcements from France to Vietnam would take months. Therefore, the French government pleaded with the American administration for help, asking them to rescue the thousands of soldiers trapped in Vietnamese territory, admitting defeat and readiness to withdraw, but requesting help to save the soldiers from dying. The American forces refused to intervene and no Western country was able to step in. France lost thousands of soldiers and retreated in defeat from Vietnamese territory, including from the Paracel Islands. Vietnam took control of all these islands until 1974, the year that provided a significant opportunity for Chinese forces to seize the Paracel Islands, leading to devastation for Vietnam. One might ask why this was considered a setback for Vietnam 
given that it had defeated France and become an independent nation. The truth is half right and half wrong, because the West wouldn't stand by as a country gained its independence by force and defeated a colonial power. The West intervened in Vietnam, dividing it into two parts, a Western-supported South and a North supported by China and Russia. The North was essentially a communist government, while the South was capitalist. A war ensued between the two sides for more than a decade, devastating much of Vietnam's infrastructure, villages, and cities, and resulting in hundreds of thousands of deaths. Specifically, 1974 was a critical year because it was when the Americans began to face defeat in the Vietnam War, losing thousands of soldiers. The North Vietnamese forces captured hundreds of American soldiers and pilots. At that time, America wanted to withdraw from Vietnam by any means possible. Seeing the war nearing its end, China decided to launch a naval and air invasion of the islands, engaging in a military confrontation with the South Vietnamese army present on the islands. The Chinese naval forces managed to destroy four Vietnamese ships and capture about 48 soldiers, including an American officer whom China released after a few weeks to avoid military conflicts with the United States. It's important to note that the Vietnamese army present on these islands was allied with the United States. They requested assistance from the U.S. 7th Fleet to repel the Chinese aggression, but the American military completely refused to intervene, either directly or indirectly. America had a clear strategy of avoiding war with nuclear-armed nations, and China had already acquired nuclear weapons by that time. This was the story of the first group of islands in the South China Sea. The critical point here is that a large portion of these islands lies within Vietnam's economic waters, meaning China occupies these islands. As I've mentioned, China told all the countries bordering the South China Sea to disregard the boundary lines they had drawn. These countries responded to China, stating that these lines were drawn in accordance with United Nations resolutions and the international definitions of economic and territorial waters of each country. China dismissed all this, insisting everyone must follow the red line it had drawn, warning that any ship from these countries entering this area would be intercepted and face the Chinese forces. The important question here is whether there have been skirmishes between Chinese forces and ships from these countries. The answer is yes. There have been over 300 incidents where Chinese ships collided with fishing vessels from these countries or with their coast guards or ships conducting oil and gas exploration within each country's economic waters. Having discussed the Paracel Islands, which are a point of contention between Vietnam and China, let's now turn to another group of islands disputed between the Philippines and China. In 2012, a group of Chinese fishing vessels went to a group of islands within the economic waters of the Philippines. Pay attention to these distances I'm about to mention to understand what China is doing there. These islands are about 100 to 150 nautical miles from the Philippines, and the definition of economic waters covers a distance of 200 nautical miles. This means the Chinese fishing vessels entered the Philippines economic waters for a distance exceeding 50 nautical miles. A Philippine military reconnaissance plane spotted these ships heading to and anchoring at the islands for an extended period. The plane informed the military commander on the border, who then sent several naval ships to the islands. There, the fishermen engaged in skirmishes with the soldiers on the naval ships. The Philippine forces attempted to arrest the fishermen, but the Chinese Coast Guard intervened with its forces and ships to solve the problem and prevent the Philippine Navy from arresting the Chinese fishermen. The Philippine military was unable to arrest them, so they retreated and left the islands. China then celebrated this event globally, sent media to the islands, and even raised the Chinese flag there. China occupies a group of islands belonging to Vietnam and other group belonging to the Philippines. But does the issue end there? No, 
We also have the Spratly Islands, the crux of the matter because this is where oil wells were discovered with reserves surpassing those of countries like Kuwait. The important question is which countries are involved in disputes, whether judicial or military, over this group of islands? The answer is almost all the countries bordering the South China Sea, including Vietnam, China, Taiwan, the Philippines, Brunei, Malaysia, and possibly Indonesia. Each of these countries today owns, occupies, or is settled on a group of these islands, which are divided among them by the dozens or hundreds. But China continually tries to take more islands, and by the way, China is also trying to establish a military presence in the area. About four or five years ago, China built a military airport and placed there a missile defense system, including the Russian S-300 system, along with missile launch systems for targeting aircraft and ships. This situation is very dangerous because China could use these islands to launch attacks on any country it goes to war with, especially the United States. Now, let's talk about the ongoing judicial dispute between these countries and China. It's clear there's no judicial dispute among these countries themselves. For example, Vietnam and Malaysia are next to each other, yes, but there's no judicial dispute between them. That's because each knows the limits of their economic waters understanding that they have 200 nautical miles of economic waters where they can explore for gas, oil, and other resources, so there's no dispute among them. The dispute is between them and China, which came along and told them to erase all their boundary lines, claiming no one has rights here and that all these boundaries are mine. The biggest evidence and example of this is the Scarborough Shoal, which China took from the Philippines. I told you, these islands are about 150 nautical miles from the Philippines. Now, imagine how far they are from China, 600 nautical miles. This explains why I say these islands belong to the Philippines. Here, I want to tell you about another example that occurred after China's exploration of the Philippine Scarborough Shoal. A Vietnamese exploration ship set out to explore gas and oil within its economic waters. The Vietnamese ship encountered Chinese naval ships and Coast Guard forces, leading to a conflict. This conflict didn't involve missiles, shells, or military weapons. Instead, the Chinese ships directly collided with the Vietnamese vessels, sinking one and killing its crew. The Vietnamese exploration ship retreated and hasn't returned to the South China Sea since. This incident is one of many that illustrates China's intention to fully control the South China Sea. I wanted to talk in detail about the Spratly Islands, disputed between China and five other countries, but I don't want to prolong the discussion. Briefly, these five countries are present on these islands because it's a large group of islands. Each country occupies or controls about 10 to 20 islands, including China. However, as I've mentioned, China is constantly expanding its military power and taking more islands by sending groups of fishermen who then get into conflicts with locals from countries like Vietnam or Malaysia. This prompts the Chinese Coast Guard to intervene. The countries involved are hesitant to engage in military conflict with China and thus retreat, a pattern that has been happening for about 10 to 20 years. This strategy represents China's recent approach. Let me conclude by emphasizing the importance of the South China Sea to China, especially the Spratly Islands. As I mentioned, the first point is the amount of oil found in this area because China has contracted with American companies to explore oil there. Similarly, Vietnam has partnered with international companies for oil exploration in the Spratly Islands it controls. Huge amounts of oil have been discovered there, surpassing Kuwait's reserves. The second point is that 64% of China's maritime trade passes through the South China Sea. This means China wants to ensure complete control over this area to dictate trade routes and ensure that no country can block Chinese ships. If China controls this area, it can compel any country to allow the passage of ships. Otherwise, the alternative would be dire 
as any conflict could force Chinese ships to take a much longer detour to reach their destinations. The third point is China's desire to maintain a military presence in the area. Therefore, it's even creating artificial islands not satisfied with the ones it's occupied. It's building airports on these artificial islands, placing defense systems, and deploying military forces to ensure a military presence. This is so that if there's a future conflict with the United States, Chinese forces would be present in the seas to intercept any approaching ships before they can reach mainland China. I hope this video has clarified the issues surrounding the South China Sea, showing that the matter is much larger than Taiwan. See you in the next video. And finally, let me ask you a question. Do you think China will win the war of this conflict? Leave your answer in a comment.